Okay, this is the chapter seven quiz. Uh, it shows two people observing the image of a rock in a flat mirror. Person number two sees the image of the rock right here. Where does person number one see the image? Well, you might think that it sees it here, but it does not. Or you might think that it maybe sees it here, but that's also not true. In a flat mirror, the image is always directly opposite where the object is, regardless of where the person is, whether you're over here, over here, or wherever. So C is the right answer. What is the magnification of a flat mirror? Uh, it's one, it's positive one, because you're always upright, and you're the same size, so it's one. Uh, concave spherical mirror has a radius of curvature of 20 centimeters. Object located at 20 centimeters, what is the magnification? Radius of curvature is 20, so the focal length is half that. It is a concave mirror, that's one that looks like this, where my object is here, so it has a positive focal length. Uh, the object is located at 20 centimeters, and I want to know the magnification. Well, the magnification is negative Q over P. So before I can find the magnification, I have to find Q. So say 1 over F. Let's solve this for Q. See, that's 2 over 20 minus 1 over 20. So that's equal to 20 centimeters, positive 1. Uh, so it looks like negative 20 over 20, or negative 1 is the right answer. Okay, a 2 centimeter high object is placed 3 centimeters in front of a concave mirror. The image is 5 centimeters high and virtual. What is the image distance of the image? Okay, well, so first of all, our uh, mirror is concave. I have an object that's placed 3 centimeters in front and the image is five centimeters high and virtual. So the image is virtual. That means that the image will be back here. And it's five centimeters high. Also because it's virtual, I know that it has to be upright. The reason I know this is because m is equal to negative q over p. Uh, to be virtual means that q is negative, And so that's going to give me a positive magnification. So my image looks like that. That's my object. OK? Let's just write some things here. Uh, first of all, I know that my magnification is positive, and my magnification is equal to hi over ho. I know that it's positive, so that's going to be uh, 5 over 2. It's 2.5. And further, I know that this magnification is also equal to negative q over p. I know that p is equal to 3 centimeters. So I can solve here. I have 2.5 equals negative q over 3. So Q is equal to negative, what's that, 7.5. So B is the right answer. In an intersection of hallways, you have a convex mirror. That's a radius of curvature of 2 meters. What is the magnification? All right, so the radius of curvature is 2 meters. That means the focal length is 1 meter, but this is a convex mirror, so it has a, a, fo a negative focal length mirror. This is a mirror that looks like this, like you have in a security mirror. And uh, the images are going to be smaller and inverted, or excuse me, upright and virtual. Um, let's see, the P is 5 meters, and I want to know the magnification. So I have to find Q, just like we did before. Let's see, that is uh, 5 fifths, 1 fifth, 6 fifths, so it's negative 5, 6 meters. Let's double check, that's 5, it's negative 6 fifths. Yeah, that's right. Okay, so negative 5, 6 meters. And now I can find my... Uh, Now I can find my magnification. That's going to be negative Q, negative, negative 5, 6, divided by P, which was 5. That cancels there, so it's positive 1, 6. And I say positive 1, 6 is 0.16 in decimal form. 
Right, this figure shows a mirror along with an object and the image the mirror forms. What kind of mirror has produced this image? Okay, actually, there was a mistake here. I apologize for that. Oh, wait, no. No, this is okay. Uh, this is my object. This is my image. The image is upright. It is virtual. And it is bigger. All right, the only kind of mirror that will produce that is a concave mirror. Concave mirror, so C is the right answer. Which of these mirrors will produce a virtual image under particular conditions? Uh, this one will produce a virtual image if the object is inside the focal point. This one always produces a virtual image, and so does this one, so A is the right answer. Which of these physical phenomena is cause of a mirage? That would be refraction. What causes a mirage? Uh, that's the refraction of light and warm air. The Earth's atmosphere no longer existed. How would the time of sunset be affected? The sunset would occur earlier. Remember, because normally the the uh, atmosphere allows you to see the sun, even though it has already dropped below the horizon. Concave lens has a focal length of 10 centimeters. All right, a concave lens, remember, it looks like this. It has a negative focal length. The object is 10 centimeters. I want to know where is the image. So my object is right here. And I want to know where is the image. So Q, 1 over F minus 1 over P, which is 10. Negative 5 centimeters. All right, now Q, a negative Q here means a virtual image. But for a lens, it also means that the image is on the same side as the object. So my image is going to be right here. This is my Q. This is my P. A negative Q means it's on the same side as the object. That's different than what we had for mirrors. So A is the right answer. Okay, so here we have a human eye consists of a, cur a converging lens, the eye lens, and the cornea. It looks like this, by the way. Human eye is a ball, a sphere, basically, with a lens. The lens is a little more complicated than just a simple convex lens, but effectively, it is just a convex lens. All right, if I'm looking at something really far away, the light rays come in parallel to one another, and they focus at the focal point. And the focal point is where our image is formed for something that's far away. The image is formed at the focal point. And so the focal point for your eye, when you're looking at a very distant object, is at the retina. All right, so in this case, this is my focal length. However, if I'm looking at something that is nearby, my focal points are going to change. I'll have a ray that will go parallel to the axis and through the focal point. Now I'll ray go through the focal point and parallel to the axis. So that my image will form on the retina. But notice that my focal lengths have changed. The eye is really fascinating because whereas most optical instruments, when you change your object distance, the way you focus is by changing the position of the lens. That is, you change the image distance. The eye, you're not able to do that because the image distance is fixed. The image distance has to always be the length from the distance from the lens to the back of the eyeball where the retina is. Uh, and so in order to accommodate viewing things at different distances, you have to change the focal length of the lens. And not many optical instruments do this. I can't think of any really. But you, you physically change the focal length of the lens by squeezing that lens, making it fatter in the middle, are skinnier in the middle, uh, which changes the focal length of the, the lens and the eye. So here the focal length was big and then it gets small. The focal length decreases. A person uses a convex lens, the focal length of 10 centimeters to inspect a gym. Convex lens that looks like this, focal length is positive, that's 10 centimeters. Uh, the lens forms a virtual image is 20 centimeters away. So Q is equal to negative 20 because it's virtual. What is the magnitude of the magnification? 
All right. Um, so here, like I've done before, 1 over f minus 1 over q. That's 2 over 20, plus 1 over 20, that's 3 over 20, 20 over 3 is my object distance in order to produce this image. And then if I want to know my magnification, That's equal to 3. So I get a magnification of 3. It is positive 3, though I've only asked for the magnitude, but it is positive 3. This is like a magnifying glass. And with a magnifying glass, uh, let's see, the focal lengths are here. Your object is inside the focal point. See, uh, my object was 23rd centimeters. That's like 6 or 7 centimeters. But my focal length is 10 centimeters. And then your image is outside the focal point or is rather back behind the object, and so this is my image. And the image looks bigger than the object here by a factor of three. By considering this following two ends, what is the magnification of the final image? All right, well first, uh, let's see, this is P1, this is F1, this is F2. So I first want to find Q1, one over F1 minus one over P1. Two over twenty minus one over twenty. That's equal to twenty centimeters. And then I can find my magnification m1, negative q1 over p1. So I get a magnification of minus one, and it's twenty centimeters. So I have my image is inverted. It is the same size. as the original image and it's located 20 centimeters to the right of the lens. That means that this distance is 60 minus 20 and this is going to be my P2. All right, so now I can solve for Q2 in the same way that I did. That's going to be 1 over F2 which is 1 over 20 minus 1 over P2 which is 1 over 40 the negative 1. That's 2 over 40 minus 1 over 40. 40 centimeters. And then my M2 uh, what was my P2? Oh, it was 40. So I have uh, equals to negative 1. That means that I'm going to flip my image again. It's about 40 centimeters. That's right about here. It's going to be the same image size. Flipped it again. If I want to know my total magnification, uh, my total magnification is M equals M1, M2, which is equal to negative 1 times negative 1, which is equal to positive 1. And then that's my answer. All right, most cameras have an aperture to block out the outer edges of the lens. What is the purpose of this aperture? Uh, well, recall, our spherical aberration says that light rays focus from different parts of the lens at different si at different focal points, and so this reduces the effect of spherical aberration by blocking out these light rays. This is your iris, by the way, on your eye. Uh, the eye gets around this spherical aberration. If we didn't have our iris, uh, one, we would get saturation of the the rods and cones in the back of our eye because too much light would get in, but also we would get spherical aberrations and things that every, everything would just look a little bit fuzzy. Uh, but the iris limits the amount of light and blocks out these rays from the outer parts of the lens. It's called spherical aberration. Lenses experience which of these? Okay, lenses experience spherical aberration, and because they have refraction, they also experience chromatic aberration. So C. Mirrors, on the other hand, only exhibit spherical aberration. All right, where does the observer perceive the mirror image of the source? We had a similar question. Always observes it right there. Uh, 
Uh, you stand in front of a mirror. How tall does that mirror have to be so you can entirely see yourself? Um, let's see, we're going to skip this one, actually. I will not count it wrong at all, so we're just going to skip this one altogether. Uh, and does this depend on your distance from the mirror? Uh, no, it does not. In fact, you can try this at home. No matter where you stand in front of a mirror, you're always going to see the same amount of yourself. So you, if, even if you move backwards from a mirror, you'll never see uh, any more of yourself. You'll always see the same amount of yourself. And you can see here the rays. These are rays that, that come from your feet. So for example, you have rays that come up here, and then they bounce off, and they hit your eye. And so you can see your feet there. However, if you move back, you're going to get the same situation. You'll have rays that come at a shallower angle, but then bounce off at a shallower angle. And so you'll still see your feet, but nothing more. All right, so you can try this at home. If you step back from your bathroom mirror, that is, if you don't have a vanity, or if you have a mirror in your bedroom, you step back from it, you'll still see the same amount of yourself. Or you can take a little hand mirror and just move it back and forth in front of you, and you'll still see the same amount of yourself. Okay, you hold a hand mirror a half a meter in front of you and look at your reflection and the full length mirror one meter behind. How far in the back of the big mirror do you see your face? All right, so let me try to do this. Uh, well, okay. Sorry about that. Hold on just a second. Not sure what happened there. All right. Uh, let's say here you are. Here's your mirror. This is a half a meter. All right, so the image of your head will appear a half a meter. And then if you have another meter, another mirror, that's one meter, back here, I want to know where is the image of this image. All right, so this image is actually going to be 1 plus 0.5 plus 0.5 or 2 meters behind. So D is the right answer. You want to set a pile of fire, uh, set fire to a pile of dry leaves, which of these mirrors do you use? You want to use a convex mirror, because convex mirror will take parallel light rays and focus them at a particular point, and that'll set them on fire. These folks are looking into the image, based on the image, what is true about the mirror and the image. Well, this is a concave mirror. Get rid of all of these. This is the Hubble Space Telescope, in fact. I know it's concave because the people are upright and virtual or excuse me, upright and bigger. All right. The convex mirror produces upright images, but they're always smaller. Only the concave produces upright, bigger images. So it's concave, and it's also virtual, because upright images are always virtual. That comes about because of that m equals negative q over p. If uh, q has to be negative for m to be positive, All right? So Virtual images are always upright if they're the result of a single element, a uh, single lens or, or mirror. What is the focal length of a pane of glass? All right, well, you imagine this. This has a short focal length, a bigger focal length, an even bigger focal length, and here a pane of glass will have an infinite focal length. Remember, the focal length is half the radius, and so the radius of a flat plane is infinity. A curved mirror surface can have spherical aberrations, but not chromatic. So A is the right answer. And let's see, this is similar to the eye problem. I have a camera that's just a converging lens or a convex lens and a piece of film. All right, a camera is initially focused on a distant object. So light rays come in, and they focus there. And this length is the focal length of the lens. To focus the image on an object close to the camera, the lens must be what? So here's my uh, thing. Your lens is going to be moved further away. I'll show you why. Because if it's closer to the camera, I'm going to have to, my uh, image is going to form. behind the focal point. All right, so I have to move the lens uh, away from the film, away from the film. 
this is very similar to the eye though with the camera it's not the focal length of the lens that you're changing it's the image distance and that's sort of the normal for instruments whereas the human eye is a little bit different because you quite a bit different actually because you're changing the focal length I think that might be the last one. Oh no. Uh, does your bathroom mirror show you older or younger? My bathroom mirror shows you younger, right? Because if I'm standing here and light rays leave my head and they go here and then they turn around and they come back, I'm actually seeing light rays that are from, you know, some time ago when they departed from my head. All right, so I'm look younger. And how much? Well, they're traveling at a velocity of three times ten to the eight seconds. Uh, the time is going to be distance over velocity. So you could probably just, you know, you say you pick, I don't know, a few meters. So we're going to be looking at a rough order of estimate, 10 to the minus 9, or maybe 1 meter, 10 to the minus 9. E is the right answer.